Hello and welcome to the Infoverse webinar series. My name is Anna Laura and I will be your host for today. Today we have Rajesh Panarangam with Infosil Inc. and he will be presenting on business objects in Tableau. Learn how Infoverse Tab delivers the best of both worlds. We do like to keep these webinars interactive, so if you do have any questions at all during the session, please enter them into the questions panel and I will um, direct those questions to Rajesh. So now I will give it to Rajesh. Take it away, Rajesh. All right. Thank you, Laura. Let me share my screen. Okay. Can you confirm? Do you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Okay. All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, today's webinar is going to be focused with the coexistence model on business objects and Tableau, and then you'll get to learn how Infoverse tab an extension of Infoverse delivers the best of both worlds with business objects and Tableau. And the agenda for today is going to be three key items overall. First, we'll discuss about DO coexistence, why there's a need for having this business objects and Tableau integration. I'll give you a quick overview on Infoburst tabs architecture, then I'll go give you a demo on the Infoburst publishing part as well to Tableau server. And then I'm going to show you some five cool visualizations in Tableau with WebE. For someone who is starting new with Tableau, where do I start? How easy it is to create uh, visualizations in Tableau? These are the things that we'll cover towards the end of the session. So I'm going to keep it 50% business objects, Infoburst, 50% with Tableau. So you get to see the power of Tableau and then why there's a need for integration over here. Before we begin, I have a poll question. I have two questions, in fact. Uh, Anlora, can you give the poll questions to our audience and then we'll get some feedback? Yes. So the first one is, what's your primary BI tool other than business objects? Please select one, Tableau, Power BI, Quilt, and then other. So just gonna give everyone a few seconds to enter their response. Okay. All right. I'm going to close the poll now. That's a good one, as expected. I think everybody is using Tableau as their secondary BI tool. Okay. Here is our second question to the poll. So the second one asks, are you planning to recreate Excelsius slash BO dashboards to Tableau? Yes or no? We'll give everyone a couple of seconds to select their answer and then I will share the poll. So it looks like 40% said yes and 60% said no. Okay, good. So we'll show you what can be done in terms of recreating an Excel shares. Okay, what are the ways that you can leverage your business objects investment with the cool visualizations in Tableau. I'll show that as well. And then if you're not planning to recreate, why there is a need for having your business objects data in Tableau? This is also something that we'll discuss today. Uh, why business objects coexistence is one of the topics that our CEO talks a lot more in user groups as well. And what we found with our business objects customer base is that more than 40% and this number it's quite higher now. This survey was done two years ago where we found that 40% of the companies who use business objects also use Tableau. And we all know Tableau is very popular for self-service, data discovery, data visualization, the data science folks and other stuff, but it's not really a good solution for BI reporting. That's where Bebby scores much better than Tableau for the reporting part. And BO customers have a strong investment in these universes and web reports. So how do we leverage this for Tableau? So we suggest that you keep web intelligence for reporting and you could leverage your web data and the universes or any underlying data source that feeds your web into the Tableau visualization. That way you have validated data going into your Tableau dashboards. And some of the key reasons here, BO content for Tableau, 
and then you can deliver and refresh Tableau extracts using Infoburst. So if you are an existing customer of Infoburst, you already know that Infoburst is very powerful in terms of refreshing, scheduling, and troubleshooting issues, or sending error alerts when a schedule fails. So the same functionalities that come with Infoburst and BO Publishing can be utilized for your Tableau extracts as well. And the most important of all is the single version of truth where you can consume your business objects data sources and use it in Tableau. That way you know that this data source is a trusted data source, it's vetted, it's been proven, and it'll be the same data source that feeds my Tableau dashboard. And the calculations that you do in web intelligence, you don't have to learn a new formula language within Tableau. You can use your Bevy formula editor and use the same calculations in your Tableau visualizations. And then you can have if-based scheduling, similar to any other schedules with an InfoBurst. Plus, you now have the capability of extracting Tableau dashboard images. After a dashboard has been built, InfoBurst can catalog a Tableau dashboard and deliver that dashboard in a PDF or a PNG format. And then you can use it to deliver to several locations, including InfoBurst portal for that matter. So we do refresh Tableau dashboards, similar to the way that we do web intelligence reports or personal reports. And the architecture, and some of you already have Infoburst. Infoburst has its own repositories. It's on a SQL or an Oracle repository. We connect to Business Objects 4.1 and above. This is for Tableau, so you can connect to any version on 4.1 SP6 and above. We can also connect to Tableau Server and catalog Tableau documents or worksheets, as you call it. And InfoBurst can also host SQL queries within our server. We can refresh these SQL queries and push it as TD or hyper extracts to Tableau server. So here is our architecture in a nutshell where you can take these documents and deliver it to a network share where you can consume in Tableau desktop or you can deliver to Tableau server directly as well. And some of our customers started with a few desktop licenses within their organization. So someone from the supply chain team or the marketing team with their own budget, they purchase Tableau desktop, and then they found out that, okay, Tableau connects to 45 plus data sources. For sure, it has to have a connection to business objects and they purchased it. But then you would notice that there's something missing in the list, which is the BO universes. Tableau does not allow a native connection to business objects universes. This is where we come into play, where we have built a UNX connector for Tableau. So we have an InfoBurst web data connector where right from your Tableau desktop, you can create a session into your business objects environment and we use a business objects credential to validate and get the universe list. And then you, we use a pull model where you connect from your Tableau desktop to the universes. A much more comprehensive model is our push model where you take the data source, the underlying universe, a webby report that's already in your environment with all its formulas and business logic. We use that as a data source, use InfoBurst and publish, schedule it, event-based alerting included, everything, and then push it as a hyperfile to Tableau server. So this is our comprehensive model and in fact, some of our customers who use InfoBurst tab, they don't even let their end users know about InfoBurst tab. So InfoBurst is so seamless that it just delivers a hyperfile to Tableau server and the Tableau users or the Tableau dashboard developers consume these hyperfiles, which we know that is the same data source as your universe or your baby report. So this is our comprehensive model here. The other additional features which are native with InfoBurst can be extended to Tableau customers as well, where you have a web intelligence report and you have a Tableau dashboard with InfoBurst content grouping. Now you can merge different documents and then you can publish it to our portal, email it, or deliver to a network share. Similarly, there was another requirement from Tableau customers where we have so many dashboards within our organization, we need a tool where we can stitch multiple dashboard images into a single PDF and deliver it via email. That is also available with InfoBurst app. Another functionality which we added end of last year after Tableau conference is that we can now burst Tableau documents similar to the way that we use baby documents in a data source and then we burst it using a filtering mechanism. 
So we use the same filtering for a Tableau dashboard, and we can burst the Tableau dashboard into a PDF, PNG, or a CSV using our bursting mechanism over here. So that's all in the slides. I want to get into action. I'll show you the tool itself, and then we'll dazzle a little bit in Tableau, and then we'll get to know more about Tableau. And if any questions, please ask in the chat window, and I'll answer the questions while I do the demo. So first, let me start with our UNX connector demo. So here is Tableau. I go to my data source and I click on more. You will notice that there's so many connections, but you don't have a connection to a business objects universe. So what we have built here is our InfoBurst web data connector. So I click on this web data connector and then using my browser link, I already have a link here which says InfoBurst Tableau add-on. It's a service that runs on my local machine. So I click here. This is our InfoBurst Web Data Connector where I can select the different business object servers that I have configured prior to this demo. So the way I configure this, I go here, and then once I install my Web Data Connector, I can go here, localhost, 8000, connectors. And in this web data connector, I can go to add new server, I give a name, I give my Tomcat server URL, my VAC server URL if I have any, and then this is how I configure using my business objects username credential. This is a one-time setting, and after that, your Tableau users will come here, and then they'll select whichever server they have access to, and you can have multiple BO servers installed over here. I click on login, and then, I get a list of universes that I have access to in my BI environment based on my business objects credentials. I select one of my UNX universes, I click next, and now I'll have the same folder structure that I have in my business layer in IDT. So I go here, I select customer state, customer city, I'll select a product group as well, I'll go to my measures, I'll do revenue, click on next, I can even add additional filters here. So I go to customer, customer state, select Arizona. I can preview this, I can click on finish. Now I have a session open on my business object server and here is my business objects data into Tableau. This is a full model, so you can't refresh it as of now. So it just downloads the data to your desktop. Okay, now let me get into the second part of the demo, which is the more comprehensive and the suggested workflow that we have here. So here I go to my InfoBurst UI, and our customers are familiar with InfoBurst. You're not new to this UI, so this is our server URL where InfoBurst is installed on a server, and we can manage connections to multiple business objects servers and multiple Tableau sites as well. So I have connection to Tableau Cloud, and then I have multiple Tableau sites that I have access to, so I can connect here within my platform settings and InfoBurst. So my first step is to open my Webby report. So here is the Webby report that I've created, and this is one of my existing Webby reports. Now I decide to use this as a data source for a Tableau visualization. So the Webby report is good. And now I go to InfoBurst. My step one is to catalog my web intelligence report. I go to platform, select my business objects environment where the Webby report is located. I click on InfoSol. I click on Tableau. And this is my report, product group state by state prompt. So I click OK. It's the same report. And now here is the report that gets cataloged. I drag and drop create a burst, I'll call this ID webinar burst. Click on add. And then my report has two document parameters. I can either supply values using a data source, a report variable, or I can enter values manually. I'll leave this blank for now. I have the option to filter my web report into multiple TDE files and deliver it to Tableau server in multiple different projects within Tableau. Or I go to deliveries, I click on the plus sign, and then 
I can select my destination. So let me call this server delivery. And then here under the list of destinations, I have Tableau server, and then it'll run a query and get the list of different Tableau sites that I have under my platform settings. Let me select my InfoSol Tableau server. This is my site ID. I click on the ellipsis, and then it shows me the list of projects I have on my Tableau server. So here is my Tableau server. I'll log in here. Then here is the list of projects within Tableau server that's listed here. So under customer demo, and some of you might be familiar with our macro builder with an introverse as well. So here I can create a custom project based on the macros over here as well. So I'll call this ID webinar. I can use my parameters from the data section as well. I'll just leave it ID webinar. And then for the name, I'll use the macro builder again. I'll go to my system. I'll call it, say, burst name. I'll leave it the way it is. And I'll can select the format. I can use DD or Hyper. And then if I have multiple tabs within my Webby report, I have the option to select the report tab that I need to extract the data from. I can add delivery conditions, email notifications once it delivers to a server. So now I'll add this. And some of you might not have Tableau server, so you can deliver the same TD or hyper file to a network share as well. So for this, here is the new Infoverse feature. I can just create a copy of the delivery template over here. Click OK. So now it duplicates my server delivery. Now I can go back and change my destination as network share. Here, I go back, select network share. Select IB share, and then I'll do IB webinar. I'll leave the name plain, then click on, or I'll do the burst name as well here. Format everything, I'll leave the same, so I click on save. So I have two deliveries, one to the network share, one to the server. I'll do a burst now. So now InfoBurst logs on to business objects. And if I have any parameters, it will pass on the parameters that I set in InfoBurst, opens the report, refreshes the report, gets the latest Webby data, exports it, and we have a create TD process or a create hyper based on the selection that we make. And then we have a Tableau upload process and it will deliver to the network share at the same time. So imagine a method where you can combine your publishing needs of business objects along with the Tableau server data source delivery. So now I have a Tableau upload and I deliver it as a hyper file to my network share as well. So let me go to my network share. Go here, I have IB webinar. Here is my IB webinar burst. Similarly, I go to my Tableau server. I go to customer demo. Under projects, we have a new project which just got created called as IB webinar. And then here under my data sources, I have my IB webinar burst over here. So from my Tableau desktop, now I can connect either to my network share or to my Tableau server. So let me show you how I connect to my Tableau server. So here's book six, I connect to data, click on Tableau server, modified, latest, here's my IB webinar burst from here go into Tableau and then start building visualizations right away. Rajesh, we had a question come in. Sure. Um, the question asks, we currently have InfoBurst. To use Tableau and InfoBurst, is that a separate license? InfoBurst Tableau is an add-on license. So if you're already an existing customer of InfoBurst, please reach out to us and then we'll uh, contact our, your account manager and then it comes up the fraction of the cost. It's not the same. I mean, you already have a license, so it's only an add-on that you need to purchase. Uh, to your question, if you're not having an InfoBurst Tableau add-on, there is an extra cost that's associated to it. But it's very minimal if you're an existing customer of InfoBurst, and we do have some specials for IBIS, which our account managers can reach out to you. Okay. Any other questions? That was all. Thank you. Okay. 
All right. So here is the Webby data into Tableau. I'm going to show you some cool visualizations within Tableau as well, which might be educational for you if you're new to Tableau or if you're looking into dashboard development, I'm going to show that. Then I'll jump back to InfoBurst and show some of its other capabilities as well. So I'm going to create a new visualization, connect to my Tableau server, and get a new Webby report into my Tableau. So I connect to data, Tableau server, modified, and then I have sales summary, which I'm going to use. Okay, I'll go to my sheet one. So let me start with the maps visualization and show something really quick and easy, but the amount of information that it can deliver is highly valuable. So here I select customer state, I click on revenue, give it a color for my revenue, give it a text. And then I want to change the color in Tableau. I click on Edit Colors. Then I click on Green or Gold. Click Apply. And then now I have a nice map view by sales. And in Tableau, when you click on the Show Me over here, there's a combination of around 15, 20 charts, I think. So you might think Tableau does only 20 charts, which is not true. But the combination of these Show Me objects and the different ways that you can manipulate all the menus, create calculated fields, parameters, sets, actions, and filters. There's hundreds of charts that you can create within Tableau, and it all comes within this simple desktop tool without the need of any extensions. So say I want to have the same map view, but I want to have a pie chart within every state. I want to know what's the product group share for every single state. I can easily create a dual access chart, and here under my dual access chart, I'll show you how quickly I do this. I want to bring in my product group into color. And then I want to bring my revenue into size. Then I want to change this to a pie. And then under my size, I'm going to increase this. And here I make this a dual access chart right away you see how easy it was to create this chart. So I increase this, you'll notice that California has the highest share. I point out here and my video share within California is 32 million and then I could go and navigate between the pie charts. How simple and easy it is to create a map chart over here. And now I'm gonna create another chart. So let me call this map. And then here's how I create another worksheet from here. So now I'm interested to know about the number of orders and the revenue that we get from every salesperson and other stuff. So I'm going to create, I'll give number of revenue and then I create number of orders that we have. And then I'm going to show, show me the different salespeople who do this. So I drop this on color and I want to know the different product names in the detail level as well. So here are my different products. So I switch this. So right off the bat, I noticed that, okay, Gilberto sells a lot, and then he sells the top product that he sells as flat panel monitor. And within Tableau, you have like a default analytics section where I can say, okay, now bring in an average line, and then I drop it at the table level low here. So here's my average for the revenue. Here's the average number of products that I sell overall. And then here under the automatic section, I'll change it to circle. And then now I select, okay, I want to see what's happening over here. I click on this point, and now you'll notice that I have a menu where I can select the salesperson name, and it'll show what are the different products or the number of orders that Gilberto is selling. It highlights it right away. Or I click here and I click on the flat panel monitor, it shows who are the different salespeople who sell flat tunnel monitors and it adjusts the average line automatically. So this is the average sales revenue for the flat panel monitors and the average number of orders for that particular monitor. This is good, but I don't know who's the red color one and I, I can't match, maybe I'm colorblind or I wanna see who's the exact person selling it. So in Tableau, you have an option of highlighting over here. So you select all fields, I click on flat monitors, 
and I click on flat panel monitors, you will see that on the right side, it shows these are the four salesperson who are selling Tableau, sorry, the flat panel monitors. So you can do a different list of selections. I can drag and drop, and if I'm interested only in this section, the average line will automatically adjust. And then selecting here, it will highlight. Here I click on Ellis Craig, and it shows the different number of orders for every single product highlighted over here. Pretty cool and easy to do within Tableau. I'm also going to show an, another visualization over here. So I'll call this order chart. I'm planning to show at least five. Let me show you a new type of chart that's popular in industry called this the Pareto chart. First, I'll bring in my product names into the columns, and then I'll do revenue. I can drop, I do a sorting, and then here, it's good, flat panel brings in more revenue. Maybe these three are the only products that sells most in my company. And How do I get to it really quick? What if I have more number of products that are used in the company? I can now click on control, drag and drop, and get a dual access chart. And then here, under my quick table calculation, I'll do, give me the running total of my chart. And now I make this, a dual axis chart, or I'll make this a line first, and now I'm going to make this a dual axis. And I go back, I change this to a bar chart. So here you'll notice that more than 80% of my sales comes from three categories. So this is the Pareto chart model. And to explain this more, so I can click on Control, and then what I can do is and select here and drag it to my text and label. So you will notice that 136 million out of the 180 million comes from these three products. So I was able to figure that out instantly. And if I want to have it as a percentage calculation, I could just double click in this measure over here, divided by the total sum of revenue, press enter. And now it gives a percentage. So go to my text label, or I can click here, go to format, change this as a percentage. I'll leave it here. And then now you'll notice that 73% of the sales, because there's a running total, comes from these three different categories. And I can also display this in the text. And then I can hide the other marks. I can select here, right click, marks label, never show. And now you'll notice that 54 million, 43 million, and 39 million just from these three products. And that is 73% of the entire sales coming from these three products. And the beauty of Tableau, you can just right click, duplicate this chart, and say, I want to have the same type of chart, but I want to see which are the states that contribute to the majority of my revenue. I can quickly duplicate this, drag my customer state into the product name directly, and then I readjust this. Now I know right away that these three different, the entire view, these three states, California, Arizona, and Pennsylvania, contribute to 43% of my sales. So it's really cool to the amount of information that you get into with the baby data that you have. Webby is good for getting all your order level reporting, most detailed transaction level reporting. But if you want to get to this level of data, Tableau visualization adds value to your business objects data sources. Pretty neat and cool. And here I created a quick table calculation by selecting here and then doing a running total. What if you want this running total to be used in every single visualization? With Tableau, you can click here and then drag it into the measures column and it'll automatically create a formula. So I can just call this running total and then it stays within the measures which can be used in all visualization. Pretty neat over here as well. Okay, now I'm gonna get into a bit more details into Tableau on creating parameters and creating the top five, top 10. How do we handle that part in a dynamic manner? So first, let me get customer state. I think I don't need it by date. I'll do it by rows, I'll do it by revenue. 
I'll have this as a chart and I will assemble it. So here I have like around 35, 40 states, but I'm not interested in it. I need only the top five. So I can just drag it into my customer filter. I'll do a top condition field by, and I'll say, give me the top five. Click apply. Click OK. Maybe I'm someone of the high level and I'm interested only in the top five. What if the customer wants to change? They want to see top 10, top seven, top 17. How do we make it dynamically in a really easy fashion? I go back to the same filter, I click on the top, and then I say create new parameter. I'll say top n parameter. And I'll leave it. I have only 50 states. I'll leave it, and then step size will be one. I click OK, apply, click OK. And now you will notice that as and when I increase, the number of top n parameters will reflect over the chart so if i change it like top five i do it if i change it like top 15 i get it here automatically and what if i want to display this value in my title i can double click the title here and then i'll say this is my top n which should dynamically update so that'll be my parameter by revenue apply click ok so now when I move it, it'll automatically update my title as well. Really, really simple to see it. Now, what if I want to see all 50 states, but I want to distinguish my top 13 states or the top 10 states. How do I change this value here automatically? Let me create a new chart for that. This is top 10 and I'll start again. So I drag in customer state. Same way I do revenue. Distinguish it. Okay, I'll leave it here. And now I'm going to show something called a sets, where it shows a different color for my top five states and a different color for the others category. So here under customer state, I can create a new set. Same way I go to my top condition by field. And then here, I already have a top end parameter. I can utilize this here as well. So I'll call this top end states. Select OK. All right. And then I drag in my top end states, and then leave it here. And then I have my top end parameter. I'll say show and control. And then I'm going to double click this, and then I want to change the end to an yellow and then the gray outside over here. I click OK. So now you notice that I try to change this, and then it changes the color automatically. So I change to like top five, and then it changes color dynamically. With this, I can add a reference line, and then if I go to my top end and say if I add a particular reference line, and then I'll do Give me an average of revenue and compute it. And then if you're into confidence intervals and other statistics, you can add those as well. So I click on OK. You'll notice that as and when I change my top end parameter, my reference line moves automatically as well. And similarly, this parameter is the same one that controls the color. So it will change here as and when I add. Pretty simple, neat within Tableau. Okay, I have one more visualization and then I'll jump back to the infoburst part. Say I have a top end parameter. Okay, California is good. Maybe I want to see who's the top performing salesperson in California. And I want to see what's the top performing product group within California. So I create new visualization. So say I create salesperson and then I'll do revenue. I'll sort it and then change it to a different color. I'll do salesperson, and then same way I right click, duplicate this, and then instead of salesperson, I'll have product group. Okay, and then I'll change this to a different color. Okay, I'll call this product group. In Tableau, you have a new feature called as Vision Tooltip, which was released in Tableau conference. So here I can click on the tooltip section over here. So let me go to this place, tooltip, and then I'm gonna say 
insert my tooltip to a sheet, which is my salesperson. And then after that, I want to insert this with my product group. Click OK. So now, when I click on California, you will see that there's the other additional vision tooltip that shows up over here. Simple, straightforward. You can play with the width and height of this tooltip, and you have a and move. Okay, Washington, who's the top performing salesperson in Washington? Uh, Leo Kamilunskian. He is the top person, and then video is the highest selling product category. So within a particular visualization, you can have other visits and within the tooltip here as well. And then into the sections here, I can select show me only for the selected ones. So when I select, only the other value shows up over here. Maybe I select here and then the value shows up here. So you have other selection diamonds over here as well. Okay. Any questions so far? Um, no questions, Rajesh. Okay. All right. So this is to showcase the power of Tableau itself. Pretty straightforward. Once you bring in the data, you can have all your baby dimensions. And when you have a customer state in baby, we recognize it as a geo dimension and Tableau recognizes it as well because we are delivering a native hyperfile. You might think that I can export the data from a baby report and still handle it, but you won't get the exact same data types that we do because we natively have a create TD process which recognizes the data type and we convert it into a native hyperfile. So that's the power of IBTAM. And anything that I create within InfoBurst, as some of you might already know, the burst can be scheduled and automated as well. So I click here, I click on the schedule. I call this a Tableau schedule. Then I can select a particular frequency. Say I select daily. I can do a Saturday and a Sunday. And then if I want to have a file-based event or an ETL check event, I have a list of events that I can select here. I select ETL check, click OK. And then it has Saturday, Sunday. Here are my items. I can have a separate alerting mechanism when it abots, and I can create this particular scheduling. And not just having a schedule to deliver baby reports to Tableau. Say you have a Tableau dashboard and you want to refresh this extract on Tableau server based on an ETL check or a file-based event, you can use InfoBurst for that as well. But similar to the way that we catalog business objects documents, you can also catalog your Tableau dashboards connecting to a Tableau site. So here I go to InfoSol Tableau server, I select customer demo, and then here I have a particular dashboard that I can use. So here is my product dash IB, which is a dashboard that I created with a direct connection to SQL. This has no connection to InfoBurst, no connection to even business objects. So I can now catalog that and InfoBurst, and then I can have it as a refresh extract. I can add this to a burst, click on burst, I'll call this dash burst, click on add. And if I want to schedule this and deliver it as PDF images for different product groups within dashboard. So under the filtering menu for a Tableau dashboard, when I click on the plus sign, it's going to show you the different dimensions that are in the Tableau dashboard itself. So here under my customer demo, let me open the dashboard itself so that you get an idea. Product dash IB, open map view. I click on edit. You will notice that I have customer city, customer state, and product group, these three dimensions. So now in my InfoBurst, I can select product group, and then I can say, give me the different value for internals, video, I click on apply, and I click on deliveries, click on the plus sign from blank. And now I can have my burst reach out to the Tableau server, refresh the extract behind this Tableau dashboard, and deliver the image to an email or a network share or InfoBurst portal as well. So I'll select IB webinar. Look here, I can use my file name. Formats are like PDF, CSV, and PNG images. 
And we consider everything as sheets, either it's a worksheet or a dashboard. Maybe you're interested only in the dashboard. You can just leave it map view, product view, and leave it dashboard, click on add, and then deliver it correctly into a Tableau dashboard. So now when you go to the timeline action, you will notice that InfoBurst logs on to the Tableau server exactly the same way that how we do with business objects. It refreshes the extract that we have and it applies the filtering and it delivers PDF images as well. So when I open product dash internals, here is my internals dashboard. The video, here is my video dashboard in PNG format as well. And one other cool feature, and this is a Tableau feature, but we can utilize with InfoBurst and business objects as well. So here is my Webby report, and I have let me open my Open Doc report. So some of you might be familiar with the Open Doc of your business objects document, which can be embedded in third-party applications. So now let me take this Open Doc link, and I'll create a Tableau dashboard where you can have a Tableau visualization and a business objects report in the same section. So here is my Tableau document. So this is the first one that we created, and then I'll create a dashboard. I'll drag and drop my map component first. I'll close this, delete containers. And then here under my web page section, I drag and drop. I use my open doc URL. I click OK. Now, this is my BI Launchpad login that shows up over here. Maybe I gave the wrong login. That page. OK. For some reason, it doesn't resolve. So the demo I was planning to show is after you have an open doc URL over here, you have a dashboard action tab within Tableau where you can add an action for go to URL. And then here I can plug in my URL. So this is my LSS customer state. This is how you pass values to it. So I can select this section of the URL. Then I'm saying from sheet one, when I select a customer state, I can use this arrow over here and then select customer state and we'll have Tableau dashboard pass this value. So I click on OK. As and when I click, it will refresh the Bevy report and it will show data only for Texas and it will show data for New Hampshire. I'm not sure why the open doc URL doesn't work. Maybe my document ID changed, but that was um, a part within Tableau as well where you can have a Bevy report or a Crystal report embedded within a Tableau dashboard in this section over here. Okay, so that's pretty much on the Tableau section at this part. Um, do we have any more questions? Or if not, I'll show you a few more Tableau features if you guys are interested. Um, it looks like we don't have any other questions, Rajesh. Okay, all right. I have content to show for um, the Tableau dashboard itself, so maybe I'll go over those. So here I have um, the line chart, Pareto chart, and then let me show you some forecasting options as well. So here I go to my sales summary. I go here, click on the plus sign. Let me bring in the order date over here. So when I bring in the order date, it it's a date, but it'll automatically have as a year, quarter, it condenses or creates a hierarchy within Tableau here. So here I can select from here, I wanna know monthly data. Okay, it gives all the different months and then I'll click on revenue. Now, I have five years worth of data and it's aggregating all the numbers for the month of January. I don't need that because it just has it as a discrete. Here, I change it to May 2015. Now you'll see a dashboard with different variables. So I go here. Then now I get a Spark line chart that I have here. And maybe I'm not interested in this part. I just started the business in 2007. I can just say here, exclude this. Then I'm not interested after this as well. 
So I'll select here, right click, exclude this. So here is my data, and then I want to display this number here. I can click on control, text label, and these are my numbers. I'm not interested in all the numbers. I want to say where my sales was the lowest, where my sales was the highest. So I click here, select give me the min and max. It shows this is where my sales is lowest, this is where it was highest. I need to add a reference line. I do add a reference line, and then here I can select my top end parameters, or I could use even a confidence interval saying that, okay, this is where my 95% or 80% confidence interval that lies in. Or I'll leave just line only and do an average. I can do a band, I can do a distribution. A band is nothing but it goes by 60 to 80% min and max, that's the section. And then I click OK, and then this is my average reference line. Now I can right click, and I also have an option called as show forecast. So I use my show forecast model, and then it computes based on the data that I have over here. And then I can right click, and then select forecast options, and then these are the other options that you can select. Do you want to have prediction levels of this 95%, 90%? You can change that as well. And then here I can right click and then do forecast, describe forecast. So if you're familiar with uh, the seasonal effect, the trend in season, it shows the different forecasting models as well. These are more on the data science or the uh, statistics part of Tableau. And similarly, if you do a Windows E, I think, sorry, um, trend lines, show trend lines. Yeah, this is my trend. I right click and then I select describe trend model. You'll get your p-value, alphas. Again, this is all more on the statistics part as well. So this is all inherent within Tableau. You don't need another third-party tool to get this p-value and then the indicators. This is for the R-squared value. R-squared is um, the section where it says if the value is less than 0.5, which means there's no correlation between the number of years and the sales number, which means as the number of years increases, doesn't mean that sales is going to increase. If it's more than 0.5, which means it's a direct correlation between the two different dimensions, the year and the revenue over here. So these are other uh, statistics part that can be included as well. The other nice features with Tableau is you can integrate R Studio or Python scripts within Tableau. So within the formula editor of Tableau, so when you go here and say create a calculated field, you have a list of different formulas and then you type in the word script. This is where you can have Tableau connect to your R Studio and then you can pass expressions or the value from your Tableau hyperfile and have R Studio calculate the different predictive models and it can pass it back to Tableau. And similarly, you can work with Python as well. So this is how you would pass values. These are other reasons why customers are willing to purchase Tableau because the people who work in marketing supply chain, they are more on the statistics or the data science part. They need data. And once you give an Excel file, they manipulate it, massage it, and then apply these models. Wouldn't it be easier if you have a design where you can supply only hyperfiles and have this single version of truth and use Tableau for all your business objects, data sources? So that's our proposition towards why IBTAB would be successful for any organization who uses business objects and flow. With this, I think I come to an end of my webinar. Here is a quick recap. To get your business objects data into Tableau, it's a four-step process. You catalog your Webby report. If you're an existing customer of InfoBurst, you already use the same burst and deliver the data source to Tableau server, supply values, select your destination, schedule it, you're done. Everything is seamless, and you get your hyperfiles in Tableau. You keep both your BO customers and Tableau customers happy with InfoBurst tab. Okay, I think I've come to an end. If any further questions, please do follow up with this. And Laura might have a few more um, slides to present. Thank you, Rajesh. Yes, if you guys just want to hang tight, I do have just a few little announcements to make. So again, thanks, Rajesh, for this awesome webinar. Um, IBIS is coming up. It's 
less than two weeks away now. So it's taking place June 17th through the 19th at Parkaya Aviara in Carlsbad, California. Um, we are offering a pre-conference and a post-conference offering on Infoburst, and then the main conference does include a whole Infoburst track, so you can get more training on Infoburst. The pre-conference is an Infoburst Certified Experts Administration course. You will get certified once you pass the test after this um, course, and then same goes for the post-conference for the Infoburst Certified Experts. There is over 100 sessions to attend, not just on InfoBurst, but in multiple topics like Webby, IDT, BO Admin, BO Reporting, and there's also a Tableau hands-on boot camp at IBIS. So if you are interested in attending IBIS, please head over to attendibis.com. You can find some more information there and register to attend. And that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for joining us today for this InfoBurst webinar. Thank you, Rajesh, for the awesome webinar. And if you guys do have any questions, feel free to follow up with us. Um, and we will make this recording available within 48 hours of this webinar. Thanks again, and this concludes the webinar for today. All right, thank you.